Right. Five minutes till launch of San Jose. At, the at top San of Jose Mount State, Park. a team of engineers are trying to get their ideas to Mars. They're developing new methods that can one day be used by the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA. Ideas that can help push the boundaries of human exploration put to use at Johnson Space Center. For Khalil Estelle, the team's leader, it's a mission with a do or die attitude. If we fail that, it shows that given the chance from, um, from, uh, from SJSU, our engineers cannot produce a rover that can pick up stuff, put it away, and can move around. And that's one of the scary things for me. But to qualify, they have to finish in one piece. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh, it fell out. It's broken off. Broken off. Oh. 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 The arm's broken. For the better part of 2015, as many as 20 San Jose State mechanical, computer, and electrical engineering students pulled together their talents and skills to build a planetary vehicle designed to explore the surface of Mars on some future NASA mission. NASA created a national competition to inspire nationwide student critical thinking that leads to innovative approaches to building a rover. Some of the best minds on college campuses were invited to Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas to compete and find those best options. The student competitors actually scouted out one another like a NASCAR race to find the strengths and weaknesses of each group effort. In a big tent in an outside rock yard, each rover prototype is fine-tuned and adjusted to make sure original components and designs actually work. For the San Jose State University team, this dream challenge almost crashed and burned months prior and only survived with a great deal of passion. A small campus club of engineers joined a top flight national student competition called the Rascal Robo Ops. It's run by NASA and the National Institute of Aerospace. They select group members starting with a poll of 32 student organizations from across the nation from there, they narrow it down to 16 semifinalists, then narrow it down to eight finalist schools from across the country. Well, we work really closely with um, our, our, our colleagues at NASA, looking to find the things that they're most interested in achieving from uh, this type of uh, university reach back. What is it that they're, they're looking to achieve? And then we work very closely with them to define the criteria, the, the, uh, the constraints. Our job is to think about tomorrow, uh, not build today. So as I said, part of tomorrow is how will humans extend their reach beyond low Earth orbit. And part of that is extending it through robots. NASA spent almost $2.5 billion in their latest rover mission on Mars and has plans for another rover mission that could cost just as much. These students are challenged to do more with less. The club was given $10,000 and instructed to build a rover that could pick up rock samples. It would also have to navigate terrain typically found on Mars or the moon. Both NASA and the NIA have adopted techniques developed during the student competition for real space exploration missions. We're trying to get people's innovation. We want to get people who are thinking outside the NASA box with ideas. Not, not only ideas about what robots would look like or what the technology would be, but how to operate them. And uh, they are really designed to help NASA get uh, fresh and innovative approaches from the academic environment, the students and faculty advisors. Uh, these are typically far out and far reaching revolutionary type of concepts that NASA is looking for interesting and innovative in insights and approaches to solving. Labrador 1 uses a rocker bogey suspension just like the one seen on the Mars Curiosity rover. It uses two cameras one located in the front and another that automatically balances itself. Of its systems and components, NASA expressed strong interest in something called a universal gripper. The yellow funnel that seems to have a balloon attached to it is actually designed to pick up objects using suction power. 
It's very noisy. The gripper is attached to a mechanical arm which can lift, lower, or move an object 360 degrees. NASA will be looking to see how effective that would be, especially if you have to troubleshoot by sending electronic signals 249 million miles away to Mars. Unlike previous student-driven competitions sponsored by NASA, Labrador 1 had to be designed for remote control from San Jose, California, just like a real space mission. Um, and then once we're ready, if, we, if all the systems are working the way that they were when we did our last mission control test, we're going to be fine. Literally, we will, we will rove throughout the entire... We, our robot will not look like it can do anything good. It won't look right. But it will be surprising to people when they see our rover roaming around, doing all the tasks, picking up all the rocks, and not having any issues. So I really have no fears for a rover this time. It's really just, uh, it's really, it's really, we've seen this, we've seen done the test, we've seen it work over and over again. We've played around with it many times before. Um, now we just need to, now it's just gonna be a different location. We're just gonna do the same thing over again. This whole testing process, which included watching the rover run, break down, fall apart, get fixed, and finally work properly, started in December, 2014. It would be May 25th, six months later, when the team felt confident enough to take Labrador 1 out to Houston. The team arrived a day early. The three members immediately began reassembling their prototype. On their first day in Texas, the team was excited to finally make it to Johnson Space Center. NASA tells all of its competitors to build as light as possible because in a real space mission, weight is an important variable in space travel. The rules say the heaviest rover is the first one to compete. Coming in at 42 kilograms, the team was a bit disappointed because the weighty San Jose State prototype was assigned to go first in the competition. They accepted the rover that we have more than I thought they would. And seeing it compared to the others, I don't feel as bad, but I still know that there's a lot more we could have done. Uh, but I'm pretty excited. <laughs> like, yeah. we're not seen as an underdog or anything. We're just seen as another competitor, which to me feels good. Because I thought we were going to be seen as an underdog. Going tomorrow, what are, you, what are you expecting? I'm expecting to just pick up some rocks. I don't expect to come in first place. I just want to show off the systems we have so we can get in again next year. Are you nervous at all about tomorrow? Honestly, I'm the type of person that doesn't really get nervous or anxious because I know it has to be done and that's just what has to be done. And so you, you either do it or you don't. Try your damn hardest to do it. I wish we could have done more testing. Like, Train drama. Yeah, I wish we did more like training in terms of mission control, but with the amount of time that we had to work with, um, I'd say I'm pretty okay with it. Yeah, I mean, like, sure. we're, it's our first competition. Yeah. <laughs> first time our club's doing a competition. First time we're in this competition for San Jose State. Yeah. And we're the first ones to go, so what else can you do? <laughs> like, I think we, we already got here. We already got yeah. this far. Like, this is this is the moment we build it up to. Yeah. It's competition day. The entire group heads to the rock yard for the first run of the week. It's a day of Labrador 1's debut, and the culmination of six months of work will finally be put to the test. <laughs> Pretty nervous. Pretty ner Why are you nervous? I don't know, that's just how I am before big events, presentations, anything I have to do. Um, I kind of like to just get it over with. I don't really like to be the first, but that's the spot we get. We usually like to go second. I think just morning jitters, competition jitters. Any failure here would disqualify San Jose State from the competition. In the past, only a few teams have actually finished. The rovers that are unable to operate are disqualified. If anything, ha if anything bad happens, like, hey, you know, we put in an effort. This is what happens. 
we'll call it a wrap, and we're happy to have participated. That was, was my mindset. So I actually wasn't nervous, I wasn't scared, I wasn't really anywhere. I was like, okay, well, let's just do this. Let's see how far we can go. With the start of a song, Labrador 1 sets off. Back in San Jose, the mission control team have trouble getting the rover down from its starting position atop of a mound of dirt NASA calls Mount Cosmo. It slides towards the edge of the mountain, causing panic back in mission control. Being first puts them at a disadvantage as they spend valuable time looking for samples to pick up. The group only has an hour to find all of the rocks and return to the launch pad on top of Mount Cosmo. They have three areas to explore and dig through for samples. A desert sand area, a simulated cratered moon zone, and a Mars rock field. From Mount Cosmo, Labrador 1 teleports to the Mars rock field. Using a camera on board, it spots a rock around the edge of the field they can pick up with ease. The control team in San Jose positions the rover to pick up its new target. Disaster strikes during an attempt to pick up a green rock. The arm malfunctions because of excess stress on some motor casings and brakes. Oh my god! Turn off, turn off, turn off the arm. Alright, When I get closer, notice the ABS actually snapped. And at that point, I was like, oh crap! I think it was Matthew who called out and he's like, Rosa, you get the tool bag. And I didn't have the whole tool bag. And I didn't even know what was wrong with the rover, so I pretty much ran as fast as I could to go get the tool. All the tools and stuff, and like, first thing we had to get out was like the duct tape, and we had our ABS glue, use that on there. Fortunately, the duct tape repair job works, and Labrador 1 bounces right back into the action. Next, it collects rocks from across the lunar zone craters, then shows off its multi-tool function as it digs out a rock from the sand pits. Yes. Okay, bring it up. There we go, all right. Would you Okay, switching to rest mode. Now. After their hour-long run, Labrador 1 finishes with just 21 points they tie with MIT on points accumulated, but end up in seventh place overall due to their mishap. CSU Long Beach ends up in last place after failing to finish. The University of Maryland was declared winner of the competition, winning first place with 102 points. <laughs> Duct tape. <laughs> Team San Jose State was not discouraged after finishing seventh. Oh my god. I'm proud to say that this thing is our first rover. Uh, regardless of how it looks, I think that the fact that it functioned and did its work, I'm happy with that. For the robotics club at San Jose State, Rasco Robo Ops presented a chance to improve their skills and work with the brightest minds in the country. But it marks a turning point for the up and coming club and its engineers as they move on to new projects and new opportunities. We are redesigning our rover and just reevaluating all the features and just finding out exactly what we want to use to have the most optimal, efficient, best system. So we're going to do the competition again. We've been spending the, uh, we'll, we'll spend the entire summer uh, working on uh, the rover, working on the next year's rover. It's going to be, it's going to be Completely different from our from the rover that we sent into the competition, um, and that's the idea for next year: is to build another rover, Labrador Mach 2, enter it back into the competition, and next year optimize the hell out of it and make sure that it not only the previous year was destroy MIT, this year is destroy everyone, and that includes NASA. Six months of laborious effort pay off for the robotics club members of San Jose State. Their prototype rover survives its first ever trip to Houston, Texas in a rigorous competition where even a possibility of finishing is a matter of luck.
but now the foundation for success has been set. With that, I feel as if I can build a strong team and we can go out there and we at least be extremely competitive with everyone else. So yeah, hopefully with the support and hopefully with a room and hopefully with uh, a new fresh outlook and a fresh start, we can uh, build up robotics at SJSU. Now the members of the club have their sights set on a new Mars challenge and with it, a second generation rover. Labrador 2 is the actual spaceship that's coming down to destroy you. That's the idea. We want, we want Labrador 2 to be the one that goes in there, tricks the entire competition thinking, okay, well they did this well this time. Natural progression for everyone wants to go like, kind of like this on, their, um, on, their, um, on the next go. We want to just be bam, right up to the top. In 2016, a new set of campus engineers will take over, develop a new design, and join a new competition with higher stakes. Next stop, the University Rover Challenge in Utah and another chance to inspire the next team from San Jose State to take their ideas and dreams to Mars and beyond.